be with us here at Jazz at Lincoln Center in beautiful New York City. And I don't want to just acknowledge the folks who are here in this room, but I also want to thank the folks that join us here live through our webcast from across the globe. We have 6,200 folks, as of last count, registered to be here with us virtually on the internet. And we're so delighted that you're here. And for those folks who've been staying up late to be with us in particular, thank you. We think it's going to be an exciting evening. We uh, are here to tell you a little bit about some products and solutions that we're very excited about. And they're products and solutions that support our deep commitment to the professional. And that's a commitment that's informed by our extraordinary professional customers. These customers are engaged with us. They give us feedback, good and bad. They're passionate. They're amazingly creative. And they inspire our teams to create extraordinary innovative products. And I can tell you that the teams of folks, the designers and engineers and the folks who support the Avid products we are going to talk about tonight are tremendously, tremendously privileged to serve those committed professional customers that we work with every day. And the products we'll talk about tonight are many, in many ways a product of that great customer feedback. The important thing, too, is that that commitment to the professional has been longstanding. In fact, this year we celebrate Pro Tools' 20th birthday. And I will say many, many folks, both here in the room and uh, joining us through the webcast, have probably been with us for much of that 20 years and can appreciate the amazing progress that we've made through that journey. And tonight in particular, I want to tell you that um, that birthday marks an important date. If you like what we've done over the last 20 years, let me tell you, you ain't seen nothing yet. So that's a little teaser for what's to come. And with that, I'm delighted to introduce, um, to take us through uh, a discussion of those products, our Senior Vice President of Products and Solutions from Avid, Chris Gahagan. Chris, come on up. Thanks, Kirk. All right, so 20 years has been a long time, and I'm a student of history, and hopefully history will provide a guide to the future. And so before we get into the products tonight, what I thought I'd like to do is take a little bit of time and talk about 2010 and what it meant to Avid, and how that set the stage for where we are uh, today. And as Kirk had mentioned, our customers really do help us kind of chart the future and decide where we should take the products. And if you remember last year, we introduced Pro Tools 9. I think Pro Tools 9 had two really seminal kind of uh, themes, if you will, that drove the development team and the product management team. The first one, and probably the one that, that caused the most excitement, was the fact that we made Pro Tools open. Fully supported third parties, third party I.O. beyond what Avid produces. The other thing that our customers told us was that I.O., hardware, was incredibly important to them. Sound quality, audio fidelity was critically, critically important. And to us, Pro Tools is the marriage of those two things. And the avid advantage is our software and our hardware without compromise. So in, in addition to Pro Tools 9 last year, we also released the new series of our HD interfaces. And these HD interfaces I didn't mention have years of learning behind them no compromises, audio fidelity, clear transparency. And over the last year, our customers have really started to adopt these interfaces. And what I thought I would do is just take a second and have you hear what our customers are saying about these interfaces. The new HDIO series converter sounds much better than the blue 192 converters. There's sort of a more width, the frequency range sounds wider, sounds bigger, sounds better. The highest priority is fidelity. The fact that you guys are focusing on that so heavily with the new converters, to me, is exciting. So far, the HD IO has, has performed really well. Um, I'm very happy with it. Whether it's a distorted guitar, a, a, a trashy drum kit, or an orchestra, or a piano, whatever it is, or a vocal, you know, you want it to, to, to be represented the way you hear it in a room or when you put a microphone in front of it. And hearing the new IOs, they sound that way to me. They sound really, really natural and really transparent. 
So those are HD interfaces for our, our very large customers. The other thing that's important for our customers is they told us make this affordable for that mobile professional, for that entry level professional. So last year as well, we introduced the third generation of M boxes, um, meant for that affordability with no compromise. Sound quality is as important to us in the mobile market as it is in the, in the installation market. And it was interesting as we, we and just recently we put up on our website a sound challenge with our inboxes. And those challenges are up against products that are three, and three to five times as expensive. And what we're hearing from our customers is an inability to, to, sound, to hear any sound difference between those expensive products and the inbox products. In fact, a renowned journalist, Craig Anderton, had done an, his own analysis of inbox, and this is what he had to say. Overall, the object of a review is to guide people in the right direction so they make the right decision, so they get the thing that's right for them. So it was interesting to do the uh, M-Box in particular um, because it's, first of all, it seemed at least to me like, like quite a departure for Avid. Getting a chance to look at the new M-Boxes, it's pretty obvious that you put, you know, the latest converters, the latest circuit technologies, um, all the things that have been learned along, along the way. You have just a little less distortion components that are masked by the noise, that are lower and, and fewer of them than other ones, with a slightly lower noise level, with a slightly lower this, a slightly lower that. By the time you add all those slightly lowers together, you have considerably lower. Avid is making a, a, a serious move to produce interfaces that, are, you know, that can stand on their own. And certainly, the more I took it apart and investigated it and poked and prodded, uh, the more I found that to be the case. You don't want to have to think about an interface. There's enough drama with computer operating systems and updates and, and you know all these other things going on that once you hook up your interface, you just want to be able to plug things into it, bring signals out of it, and not have to worry about it. And I really haven't had any worries with the Mbox Pro at all. It just it's 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 easy to forget about, and I think that's a compliment. <laughs> So it is really great for the development teams to build kind of the next generation of existing products. But as important, it's, it's, it's critically uh, challenging for us to also take technology and evolve it into new spaces. So the other things our customers were asking for us, from us was how do we take the power of Pro Tools and harness it with the power that modern computers have to bring HD to a new price point. So last year we introduced Pro Tools HD Native, which gave our customers the ability to use the world-renowned Pro Tools HD software at a new entry price. And it really has allowed a lots, lots of customers to experience the advantage of HD at prices far different than our HD systems. In, fa in fact, Frank Filippetti, one of the world-renowned mixers, engineers, and producers, has been using this recently and this is what he has to say about HD Native. And I gotta say that right now, I don't think there's anything better. The sound field is, suddenly the speakers go away. And it just, the sound field just opens up like a, like a, a curtain was lifted. There's also a sweetness in the top end that just sounds right. Like the waveform is doing exactly what it's supposed to do as it's going out to the, to the upper reaches of our hearing. Just the overall headroom, not only sonically, but the headroom processing-wise, the headroom voice-wise. An engineer makes a thousand decisions every hour. What preamp to use, whether you use a, use a 300 ohm, you use a 10K. When you get a big change without doing anything, that's great. You know, when I can play, when I can play back my mix that I just work my, my tail off, and have it sound like, wow, without changing a knob, suddenly I'm saying, now that, that's, that's something. That's something that I'll fight for. The native system um, changes, changes the rules. It changes the ball game. All right. So I know what you're all saying. Great, great trip down memory lane. So what's the new stuff? What's the news? So again, I, I think over the last year, as we've listened to our customers kind of understand what they wanted, what I'd like to announce tonight is Pro Tools 10. 
a gigantic leap in sound and speed. It has over 50 new major features and countless improvements to existing features and existing capabilities. I think just to name a few of these top features are things like clip gain, the channel strip, real-time fade, Yukon enhancements. I could go on and on and on. But instead of me standing here and talking, what I thought I would do is have one of our product designers from Pro Tools, David Gould, come on up. And David's going to take you through some of the amazing new features in Pro Tools 10. David. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Chris. David, I might pop back. I might have a few questions for you, all right? Sounds good. OK. Hey, everybody. Uh, I am very excited to be here today to be able to show you some of the new functionality in Pro Tools 10. Some of these features have been in development for over two years now, and it's really exciting to be able to reveal them to the world here. So I, I want to start by talking about some editorial things. What we have here is a, we've got a Pro Tools session um, running an Alicia Keys track. Uh, I'm just going to play you a bit of it so you get a feel for what we're working with. It's about 60 tracks of audio. And then we'll take a bit of a deeper dive into some, into some editorial things. So first of all, I'm just going to play some back. Okay, so that gives you a feel for what we're working with. Now, as I say, I really want to talk about editorial workflows. So the first thing we're going to have a quick look at is um, some of the vocals here. So I'm just going to solo this up and see what we've got. Okay, so now if I make a selection, I'm going to put a crossfade in. And the first thing you're going to notice is there's no more rendered crossfades. So Pro Tools 10 brings a brand new real-time fade architecture to Pro Tools. And along with that comes a new uh, crossfade view as well for this overlapped crossfade. So if I zoom in, you can see, you can now really see what the individual con um, contributing parts are to the crossfades, both fading in and out um, of each individual fade. For example, if I were to uh, take this middle section and mute it, you can see now we get the fade out, the fade in. This kind of thing was never possible with rendered fades because it would create a tiny file for each of these fade sections and it would have to play that file back. There was nothing happening in real time. So you can see immediately it's much faster to create fades, it's much faster to work with fades. If I want to nudge things around, you see I can nudge under here and it's not having to recalculate anything. If I want to move fades around, I can move them. Nothing is being recalculated. Everything works in real time. A much faster way of editing. If you're putting edits across 96, 100 tracks, it's instant, no more waiting around for fade files. So that just makes editing faster. But the next new feature really brings a whole new world to editorial in Pro Tools. Um, a very commonly requested feature is something called clip-based gain. And we've introduced that in Pro Tools 10. And not only have we just done a simple implementation of it, we've really taken it to a, what I believe is a new level. So let's just have a quick look at some of the features. You can see down here in each clip, we have a little icon, a little fader, and a little 0 dB sign there. Now, I can easily turn that on and off should I not want to see it. But if I do, once I have that, I can then click on this, and a fader will appear, and I can adjust the level of a clip directly from my edit. David, throw a quick question. Yes, Chris. I was the designer of Pro Tools. Yes. I would want to be able to do that while you're playing the track back. Well, can but of we course, do that? Of course we can. So as I play this through. So you can see you get real-time responsiveness. Um, and it, as I say, with the um, real-time fades, it really allows you to get in there and see exactly what's going on. No more kind of guessing and adjusting things. So clip -based Gain really is this amazing um, tool set for the editor. But it's not just about this simple gain adjustment. We've also um, gone in a lot more in depth. And actually, I can, uh, again, use a keyboard shortcut to turn on a clip gain line. And now within this line, if I zoom in, you can see each clip has a line that goes throughout the crossfade. So even within crossfades, all contributions are adjusted by gain. I can now use standard breakpoint editing. So if I want to add a breakpoint there, bring it down. I can even use a pencil tool. 
And you can see, as I draw things in, the waveform is adjusting in real time. So you're getting this real-time feedback about exactly what's going on. And of course, this is pre-processing, pre-fader, pre-everything. This is a truly editorial tool. Um, so, you know, even if I turn off the clip gain line, my waveforms are still adjusted. Turn it back on and I can edit more as well. Um, and of course, you know, if you're working in a, a post environment, you can bring clip gain values across from Media Composer into Pro Tools, so we get that full round trip workflow as well. There are also a lot of um, keyboard shortcuts because we were really focused on the usability and ease of use of this function. It's got to be a natural part of editing, so when you're actually editing, fading, cutting, chopping, you need to be able to do it all from a single view, which you know, I think we've achieved quite nicely from here. So that's a brief introduction to clip-based gain. Um, hopefully, you can see how this is really going to change how editors can work with Pro Tools. But in addition to this clip-based gain, which is all happening in real time in the engine, and the real-time fades that are happening in the engine, we've also made large improvements to our rendered workflow using Audio Suite. So if I just bring up a uh, memory location here, you can see I've got these three Audio Suite windows have turned up. Now, the first thing you'll notice about this is that there are actually multiple Audio Suite windows open. This has never been possible previously. You could only have one open at any one time. Now, let's say I take that vocal section that we were just looking at. I'm going to make a selection across here. Choose this whole bit. And then I want to apply this EQ. So I'm going to press Render. And now the first thing you'll notice is that all of my crossfades have remained intact. And actually, if I turn my clip gain line back on, you'll see that my clip gain has remained intact as well. So all that's happened is I've actually rendered the underlying audio file rather than actually burning everything in, as would have happened in Pro Tools 9 where it would burn the crossfades into a whole new file. But now I can actually carry on editing. So I can move my crossfades around. I can you know, trim things. It's, it's really very easy. And one of the reasons I can carry on editing is that I've actually got handles at the beginning and end of the processed files. So no longer does it just put on the timeline exactly what you process. So down here, I've got my... Uh, handle length, which is currently two seconds. I can do anything up to 60 seconds. Um, and also, I can choose to just do whole file, and that will then render the entire underlying file. Um, so if I just zoom out, you know, I can then apply some, I can uh, remake the selection, apply some dynamics, and then render using Maxim. Now, uh, this is our Maxim plugin. We've actually done quite a lot of work with plugins in this release as well, which we're going to talk more about a bit later on. But Maxim's had a facelift, and we've actually introduced some new plugins. Uh, so I'm just going to bring up another preset here. And one of these new plugins is what this here, which is a, a plugin we're calling the Avid Channel Strip, which is a, a, a really... Um, hold Chris. On, hold on a second. Just so we're clear. We're clear. This is a Pro Tools demo. The Channel Strip is an Avid System 5 console feature. Exactly. So, what this plugin is, is we took the Euphonic System 5 and painstakingly created a plugin of the channel strip, including the full dynamic section and full EQ section of that acclaimed award winning console. So, basically, the, the features that are in the console around channel strips are now part of Pro Tools software? Absolutely. So, every Pro Tools system, every Pro Tools 10 system comes with this plugin. I'll do a bit of a deeper dive into the plugin a bit later on. But you can see, as I'm recalling these presets, the settings are coming back with them. So you can now set up these complex effects chains with multiple audio suite plugins and still carry on editing. So we've really improved both the real-time editorial workflow and the rendered editorial workflow. So um, just to mention a couple of other um, pain points that we've addressed in this release as well. If I scroll down to the bottom here, I've got some, uh, I've got some stems, some stereo stems. I can actually uh, double-click on this to select it. I can use the new Reveal in Finder option. And what you'll see is this is a single file. So we've now got native support for interleaved files in Pro Tools. And this is interleaved stereo right through to 7.1. Um, you can record as interleaved. You can import interleaved. You can also now have mixed bit depths and mixed file types within a single Pro Tools session. So this means far less duplicated media far easier media management. You no longer need to split things to mono every time they come in, whether you're working with sound effects, whether you're working with library music, you can natively use those um, interleaved files. So one last thing I'd like to talk about is um, uh, Yukon enhancements. 
So in Pro Tools 9, we first um, made Pro Tools a, a Yukon aware client. And we promised then that we were going to carry on development, and we really have this year. So in Pro Tools 10, there's a whole load of Yukon enhancements as well. Uh, we've actually Yukonized in excess of 400 Pro Tools functions to be available from the console. And we've taken some of our more advanced automation modes, such as preview and capture, and made those available um, from Yukon surfaces as well. You can now control your satellites from Yukon. You can control heat from Yukon. Um, and if you're using um, one of the larger Yukon surfaces, so something like the System 5 MC that has the TFTs, you can now take plug-in EQ curves, and they will appear on the TFTs as well, which was one of the big requested features from our first implementation of, of, of Yukon. So they're just a few of the editorial um, enhancements, which I hope you see will really increase the speed of editorial work within Pro Tools, and I think really uh, add some amazing new functionality and, and allow people to be creative. Yeah. Back to you, Chris. All right, David, well, don't go anywhere, because you know we're not even close to being done yet. And Absolutely I think, not. if I counted right, you showed us about six features, mm -hmm. so we have another 44 to go, but we don't really have time for those 44, and we'd be here for a few more hours, but I think that's the one thing that it does show. I mean, just in the, the few things that David was able to show, how many things we have uh, addressed or listened to our customers and, and really created new capabilities. And as I mentioned, history is a good uh, conduit for the future. And so the very next question that always comes up when we talk about Pro Tools is, so how much? All right. So everything that we've talked about from, from a Pro Tools 10 standpoint is available starting at $699. And if you're a current Pro Tools user, the upgrade is $299. So all this stuff, the amazing things the team has done, the 50 enhancements, or 50 major new features, the enhancements, um, are all available. And the very next question that I know you all want to ask is, so when? So the simple answer to that is now. Well, right after we're done. So 8 o'clock tonight, worldwide, 8 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, is available worldwide through our channel partners, Pro Tools 10. The other thing that we've learned is that one size does not fit all. So for our pro customers, they have a set of requirements and a set of needs that go beyond what Pro Tools 10 does. So what I'd also like to be able to announce tonight is Pro Tools 10 HD, which is the next generation of our HD software with features like extended disk cache. We now support systems of up to 12 satellites uh, D command in multi-mode, advanced clip gain, so even more cool stuff around the clip gain, of course, more track count. But like last year, it's not just about software. It's also about hardware. And to take advantage of some of these amazing new features, we'd also like to announce tonight the next generation of our DSP platform, Pro Tools HDX. And when we built this product, and we talked to our customers, things that they were asking for, higher track counts, more headroom, don't clip as quick, better sound quality, and of course, more processing power. You can never have enough, can you, David? Absolutely. Never enough. So what does HDX deliver? Five times the power of our existing system. And we'll talk about what that means in a minute. We've now moved to a full, full float, 32-bit floating point architecture within the DSP card, which basically means you cannot no longer clip in Pro Tools, and, and Dave will actually show that. Something called AAX plugins, we'll get to that in a second, and much, much more. And like before, David, I could stand up here and talk about all the features, but we're going to have you show the world <laughs> Pro Tools HDX. Okay, thanks again, Chris. So yes, we are running a Pro Tools HDX system here. Um, it's actually an HDX, HDX2, so I have two of these HDX cards inside my Mac Pro down here. Um, and I'm just going to go through some of the enhancements and improvements in HDX. It really is an amazing, exciting new product. So the first thing to take a look at is over here in my system usage. I'm using 283 of 512 available voices. So this is a two-card system. Each card delivers 256 voices. And so if I had a three-card system, which is um, entirely possible, I'd have 768 voices available to me, which is four times the largest Pro Tools HD Excel system available today. 
And real, real quick, that's a good point. So we could not even build a system this big today? Absolutely not. So using 283 voices, I'd need to be across multiple systems, maybe satellited together. So this mix would just not have been possible on a Pro Tools HD Excel. So this system. is like an HD 10 system we have here? Something, Something like, like that. that. Yeah. All it's, right. It's an HD a lot. A lot. All right. Exactly. And it could be even more by putting one more card in it. Yeah, all but right. right now it's just an HDX2. All right. So it's all good. So that's all good and well. That's, that's voices. That's a big improvement. But now let's talk about processing. So as I say, this mix, uh, it's somewhere around 100 tracks. We've got quite a few hidden tracks. Each have got a few plugins on. We've got um, quite a lot of busing, quite a lot of routing. So that's how we're getting through all the voices. Um, there's an awful lot going on. There's a couple of plugins per tracks. We've got a few hidden tracks with some reverbs on. So let's have a look at, let's have a look at what we're using. So actually, of these two cards, we're actually using quite a lot of it. Now, why is that? Well, mainly because down here, if I reveal inserts F to J, you can see that across all of these tracks, I've got at least six or seven plugins running. And we're not even filling the two-card system. Now, a mix of this size just wouldn't be possible on uh, an HD system today. Um, we've got you know three channel strips per track. We've got a load of EQ3s, a load of... Uh, exciting new plug um, plugins, and we're not even using the whole system. So when we talk about processing, it's, it's actually really interesting. We're seeing generally up to five times the power per card, but in some instances, we're actually seeing much, much more than that, um, up to you know, much higher um, amounts of, of processing available. Uh, so it's a really amazing, exciting time. Now, what makes this uh, all possible is the fact that this is a true hybrid system, um, taking advantage of DSP, FPGA, and host processing. So as you can see, we've got um, 18 chips per card. Um, and uh, to, take, to take advantage of this seamless um, hybrid system, we actually have a new plugin format called AAX, or Avid Audio Extension. Now what the Avid Audio Extension means is that you can create a single plugin and have it be on the host or on the DSP and sound identical. This was never possible with TDM and RTAS plugins. They used a different architecture. When they clipped, they sounded different. Um, there, there were differences between them, whereas now you can take a single algorithm and have it as a DSP accelerated plugin or a native plugin, and they will sound exactly the same. Hey, David, real quick question for you. Sure. So is the AX plugin on Pro Tools 10 as well as Pro Tools HD 10? Yes, it is. So that means that a Pro Tools 10 session will sound exactly the same as a Pro Tools HD 10 Absolutely. Session? So it sounds identical. Um, Pro Tools HDX uses a 32-bit floating point mixer with a 64-bit floating point summing mix bus. So it's an amazing, um, completely new mixer. Sounds incredible. And the great thing is, as you say, you get this seamless interchange between native systems and DSP accelerated systems. So uh, thinking about AX plugins, what about third parties? Well, we already have over 100 um, third party developers who are committed to the AAX platform. And here at the AES show over the next few days, there are, I think, 25 developers showing over 50 new plugins in the AAX format. So it's actually a really exciting time for plugin development. So let's take a look at um, one of our new AAX plugins, the channel strip. So what I'll do is I'll go over to the, uh, to the mixer, to the, to the main bus, and just give you a quick tour of channel strip. So as I say, it's got most of the functionality of the system five. So we've got an expander gate. We've got a compressor limiter. We've got all the side chain functionality. Of course, we've got four band EQ, um, two band filters. And actually, some of the uh, amazing things about this is the fact that you've got all this flexibility about how it's put together. So I can choose to go EQ first, then filters, then dynamics. I can do my dynamics first. I can filter before it does the dynamics. I can just press here, and it will change the chain order. I've got a trim on input, so I can easily change the input level coming in. And I can just grab the graph here and uh, see it move. So let's, let's play something back and see what happens. Oh, not from there. It 
really is an amazing sounding plugin and, and everyone who's used it so far, beta testers and people we've worked with, have just completely fallen in love with it. We went to painstaking lengths to make it as, uh, as much identical to the System 5 as we could, so you have a very easy transition between the two. It's a really amazing new thing and, and as we say, it comes with all new Pro Tools systems and with HDX, it's fully DSP accelerated. So that's a very exciting thing. Um, one other thing is, with all of this new processing, we actually um, realized that we needed more um, automatic delay compensation. So in, in Pro Tools 10 uh, and on Pro Tools HDX, you now have up to 16,000 samples of delay comp. So this has been a commonly requested feature for some of these more complex plugins, and now you can get up to 16K um, with any of these new systems. So really uh, big improvements there. Now, the next thing I want to talk about isn't actually directly related to um, HDX, but is more just about performance in general. Now, disk performance with Pro Tools has been a pain point for some of our customers for some time now. And we've actually done some amazing work um, and come up with a solution that I think you're all gonna love. So, in Pro Tools 10, the disk scheduler, which is the system which Pro Tools uses to interact with hard drives, has been completely rewritten. So, everyone from someone on a laptop with a, an M-Box through to someone using Pro Tools HDX is going to see huge improvements with this performance. Now that ties into um, real-time fades not being there anymore because suddenly you're not having to access these hundreds, often thousands of tiny little files, which means you're accessing far fewer files and you can get much better performance. But what it also means, uh, not what it also means, but something extra that we've given to uh, Pro Tools HD customers and Pro Tools with Complete Production Toolkit is the ability to playback audio directly from RAM within the computer. So this is amazing new functionality um, using something called, that we're calling an extended RAM cache. So in my playback engine here, uh, you can actually see that I've set uh, my cache size to be six gig. So this is using a 64-bit uh, address space outside of the standard Pro Tools um, memory usage where I can uh, when I open up a session, it can pull all of the audio files associated with the session into that cache and then play back directly from RAM. So, hey David, I, real yeah, quick, two sure questions, mm -hmm. two quick questions. So first of all, with, with disk caching and real-time fades, what does that mean to the speed at which we can save and open Pro Tools sessions? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. All right. Uh, it's actually much, much faster to open Pro Tools sessions now. So uh, again, due to this much smaller number of files that Pro Tools have to access because there aren't all of these hundreds and thousands of little um, fade files, suddenly Pro Tools sessions open much, much quicker. Question two. Mm -hmm. So I got Pro Tools 10, my buddy's on Pro Tools 9. Get him an can, upgrade. Can, well, I know he doesn't want to upgrade though, no. but so can, he open, can we open Pro Tools 10 files that have disk caching and no fades in a Pro Tools 9? Absolutely. So we actually did some work with, with real-time fades and some of these other function, functions to ensure a round-trip compatibility. Um, Pro Tools 10 actually uses a new session file format, the .ptx file format, um, but from within there you can choose to save as a Pro Tools session file, a Pro Tools, set, a Pro Tools 7 session file, 7 to 9 session file. Um, and what happens is when you then open up that file in Pro Tools 9, it automatically re-renders all of the necessary fades because the actual fade logic, the, um, the kind of fades that are available haven't changed, it's just that they're now being rendered in real time. And vice versa, if you take a uh, Pro Tools 9 session and open it in 10, it's no longer reading those fade files, it just immediately converts the fades to be the new real-time fade type and you can throw away that fade folder because you don't need that anymore. So we do have a full round-trip compatibility there. So going back to disk cache, what this means is that as I'm playing my session, I get this amazing responsiveness that's just never been possible in Pro Tools before. And something about this session which is slightly different is that it actually is using 32-bit floating point files. So as well as the 32-bit um, floating point mixer, we can also now create 32-bit floating point files for increased headroom and clarity throughout the entire signal chain. So these are actually, you know, big files, they're a third bigger, but yet again we're getting this incredible performance. So over here in my, my disk cache meter, I can see that 100% of my timeline is cached. So all of the media associated with my Pro Tools timeline is in the disk cache, and the disk cache is 69% full. So we're using 69% of a six gig 
um, disk cache, which is a, somewhere around four gig. So there's an awful lot of media in here. But yet when I access it, it's completely instantaneous. This was just never possible previously. And what this also means is that we can now fully support playback and recording to network volumes, including Avid shared storage systems. And we've also lifted the limitation, meaning that we're completely open to any third party storage as well. So the storage enhancements are a really amazing thing. So hopefully between the editorial enhancements that I showed you, some of the mixing and processing enhancements that HDX brings, the new channel strip plugin, and the huge performance increase that the, the disk cache brings, you'll really kind of see why this is such a gigantic leap in, in both sound and speed. Everything is going to sound better, and you're going to be able to get your work done much, much faster. So, thanks, Chris. All right, David, thanks. And don't go anywhere. We're still going to need you here for okay. a little bit. All right. So uh, hopefully you can see that not only with Pro Tools, but with Pro Tools 10 and Pro Tools HDX, the amazing leap we've taken, gigantic leap in, in sound and speed. But I'm sure the next question is, how much? And uh, so as we look at Pro Tools HDX, it, it's, if we think about it from a value point of view, it's, it's clearly more, more than the traditional HD Excel systems um, in terms of sound, power, and speed. And I know what you're all thinking. Value is corporate speak for it costs more money. Um, but that's not true. In fact, if we took a HD3 system, an existing Excel system, with HD software, and let's call it an Omni I.O., it would cost you today just a little bit less than $15,000. A HDX system with Pro Tools 10 HD and the same Omni interface, interface with more power is just slightly less than $10,000. So more power for more value. So again, I think what we're really trying to deliver here is the next generation of system that, that harnesses the power as well as what we've done uh, within the software. So that's Pro Tools 10 and Pro Tools um, HDX. I'd like to really thank two groups of people, and, and we'll move on, is first, all the product designers, the product managers, the engineers, the QA people uh, at Avid that have made Pro Tools possible but also our customers, especially the beta customers. We've had beta and early adopters working with us for the last six or seven months, taking code drops, giving us feedback, and helping us improve the product. And it's very, very amazing. The, the feedback has actually helped us um, even make the product better. So I thought I'd do now is just let you listen to the people that have been using the product and what they think about Pro Tools 10 and Pro Tools HDX. It's really nice for us to have a platform that you can count on being used in every major facility in the world. It literally becomes like second nature, and it's like you're, it's thinking with you. me more than a new version of Pro Tools coming out. I'm over the moon to see all these new features in Pro Tools 10. It gives me a lot of hope and excitement about where the product's heading, and I'm very impressed with that. The greatest thing about Pro Tools is that the system is really committed to the profession of audio engineering, and it's always been, first and foremost, the premier tool for audio engineers in the DAW workspace. Clip automation, the volume automation on the clips is, is mind-blowing. It's going to save me hours and hours of editing. Within the first couple of days of using Clip Game, I needed to have it. It's that big of a deal for me. Instead of going in and trying to do a fader ride or drawing in a fader ride, I can use Clip Game and get exactly what I need. It's like, wow, wonderful, everybody loves it. This caching is huge for me. To be able to be in a studio or in a listening session environment and be able to sessions flying open and close like just as fast as I'd play an MP3 basically, uh, that's fantastic for me. Yeah, the ability to load our entire session into the, into the RAM is huge. And we've got three systems linked together right now with 1080p video, 192 tracks on, on effects, anywhere in the session and it'll instantly play back. The systems have never been faster. It's a night and day difference in the way our systems operate. 
even run those same sessions on a network drive or an NAS. You don't have to worry about the speed of the drive anymore. That alone will make some huge changes, especially to a large facility like us. We could actually set up a local server system and be able to run our entire session off of a server. And having that flexibility to be able to play off of anything is fantastic. And real-time fades are amazing. They're instant. They take up no drive space, whereas, you know, in the past we'd have thousands and thousands of fades per session, but now it's, it's not even a concern. We're right in the middle of a feature film in Pro Tools 10. We're up to about uh, 360 tracks combined on, on both sides with doing dialogue, music, effects, and photos. This is just the way to mix. It's fun, it's fast, and with Pro Tools 10, we are rock solid here. I think when people see Pro Tools 10, they're going to understand that Avid is reaching into the future, and they're a forward-looking company, and they're going to keep making great products. We've all been waiting for this. The design and the architecture of HDX is going to allow us to do things that we could have only imagined. You know, with a multi-card system, I can do 128 tracks of 176k or 192k audio at 32-bit floating point with the same track expectations of a much lower sample rate system on HD. You can be able to mix an entire movie in one system. Not only does it instantiate plugins faster, it moves faster, things respond faster, and as we know, time is money. So with the, the new 32-bit floating point math, they've added you know, another 1,000 dB of, of gain throughout the structure, and you don't really have to think about the headroom issues as much, and it just sounds much better, much cleaner. It's going to be the difference, I would say, probably between what a mix system to an HD system was tenfold. The way I look at Pro Tools versus other, other DAWs is I know I'm getting the truth with Pro Tools. I can't be so sure with anything else. I just can't. The HDX got us closer to this analog thing than we've ever been before, and it sounds fantastic. It's, it's really competitive. And I think that this is gonna be a paradigm shift in terms of what people are gonna expect from their digital systems. It's got speed, it's got flexibility. Everything is more. Clearly, it's the system for the professional. Pro Tools 10 and HDX, it's the best digital recording system that I've heard to date. All right, David, good job. <laughs> So just to recap what we've, we announced today, starting with Pro Tools 10, um, really geared towards a mobile prof professional, the entry level professional, onto our Pro Tools 10 HD, both for HD native, as well as the new HDX system. And again, we, we have lots more information on, on pricing, but many price options, many upgrade paths. And I think the interesting thing about upgrade paths, I think Avid has always provided an upgrade path between the systems. But before, as you move from system to system, they would sound different because we had different algorithms between the pro systems and the HD systems. Today, as you move back and forth, you'll hear no sound dif difference, which I think is, is pretty, pretty amazing. Good job again, David. So with that, hopefully you can see that Avid is, in fact, very, very committed to the professional. I think the team has done an amazing job over the last two years, um, and I think there will be more to come. But here is where our program is going to slightly diverge. So for those of you on the web, don't go anywhere. As soon as it ends, we have product specialists and product managers online, online chat to, to, for you to ask and we'll answer questions. Here in the room, we'll do a live uh, Q&A. Um, but as I'd mentioned before, Avid is really very, very committed to the professional. It's been 20 years, and as Kirk has said, you ain't seen nothing yet. It's been really exciting to be working in this field for 20 years and be here on the 20th year anniversary of Pro Tools. You know, I wake up every day thinking, you know, what's a better job than this? 
I'd like to say happy birthday to Pro Tools. Uh, it's really changed my life. I probably wouldn't have a career without Pro Tools. And uh, I'm very thankful for all the great innovations that you guys have brought to the Post community and sound in general. Thank you. Well, I wanted to say happy birthday, Pro Tools. You're 20 years old, and you don't look a day over 10. Happy birthday. Pro Tools, I've known you for 12 years now, and it's been a fun and rewarding relationship. And I just want to say happy birthday. Happy birthday, Pro Tools. We love you. Let's go for another 20. <sighs> Pro Tools, it's been a long time. Me and you, 10 years, but yourself, 20. So happy birthday. All right.